The second example we're going to cover here is using the half-life method to determine the order of a reaction. And so in this case, our reaction is just a simple, I have reactant A that turns to product B. And then what we do is that we change the concentration of A from 1.2 to 0.6 molar. And what that did is that it increased the half-life from 2 minutes to 4 minutes at 25 degrees Celsius. And so then the question is, what is the order of the reaction? And so to do this, the strategy that we're going to um, utilize is that we're going to calculate using these expressions that determine the half-life of a reaction depending upon its order and that we're going to calculate based on the data that's provided what is the rate constant k and if the rate constant k is consistent across these two data sets meaning we've got this 0.1 or 1.2 molar so there's our first data set and then we have our second data set our 2 or 0.6 molar with our 4 minutes and if our k is constant then that then becomes the order of the reaction where do these half-life expressions come from? Well, let's just do the zeroth real quick. So for the zeroth order, what we would have is we would start with our integrated rate law expression, which again, if you remember, was the concentration of A is equal to negative KFT plus the concentration of A naught. And then what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the concentration um, or the time at which it takes for the concentration to drop from A naught to one half A naught. So T1 half basically says is the time such that A naught goes to A naught over 2. And that just means that in this integrated rate law expression that I have right here, all I'm going to substitute in is the, for my concentration of A, I'm just going to write concentration of A naught over 2 minus Kf. And the time that it happens at is just T1 half. And at this point, I'm just going to rearrange. So I have A0 over 2. I'm going to move my A0 to the other side. So I'm going to have A0 over 2 minus A0. And that gives me minus Kf T1 half. And then finally, I'm just going to do this subtraction. So I get negative A0 over 2. And to that, I'm going to divide by Kf. So I'm going to have a minus Kf over here on the left-hand side on the denominator. And what that leaves me then is A0 over 2 times Kf is equal to my half-life time. And I, we would follow the exact same strategy to find out this value, this expression I got for a first order, and again for the simple second order rate law expression that we calculated previously. So now that we know where these expressions come from, let's employ our strategy. Remember, we're calculating Ks based on the data that's provided. So we have our 1.2 molar. If we assume a zeroth order expression, then I've got t one half is equal to 1.2 over 2k. My t one half in this case is 2 times 60, meaning 2 minutes times 60 seconds. It's always good to work in standard um, units, meaning kilograms, meters, seconds. So 2 times 60 is what I'm writing in for my t1 half. When I solve for k, my k is simply going to be equal to 0 0.005. Now if I do this again for the 0 0.6 molar, again this is for the zeroth order, I have a t1 half and that's equal to 0 0.6 divided by 2k. I'm going to substitute in my 4 times 60 because now it's 4 minutes it takes for that reaction to happen, 0 0.6 over 2k. And so what that means is then my k ends up being equal to 0 0.00125. And so because these two numbers are not the same, then we would say this isn't a zeroth order reaction. Let's do this for the first order reaction. So in this case, I've got t one half is equal to the natural logarithm of 2 divided by k. I'm going to substitute in the same 2 times 60, ln 2 over k. That means in this case my k is equal to 0 0.0058. I do it for the 0.6 molar. I have t one half is equal to natural logarithm of 2 over k. Um, I'm going to still write in, in this case again, this is the 4 times 60. And that's equal to the natural logarithm of 2 over k. In this case my k for my first order case is going to be equal to 0 0.0029. Again, these two numbers are not the same and the k needs to be the same no matter what the initial conditions are and so that means then that this is probably not a first order reaction
And so now that we've eliminated the zeroth order process and the first order process, let's do it now for the second order process. And so for that one we have a t one half that's equal to one over the concentration times k. In this case we had t one half, so we're going to still have that two times sixty. In the case where we have the one point two molar times k, in this case my k is equal to zero point zero zero six nine. And then for the zero point six molar case we have again, I use the same expression, t one half is equal to one over a naught times k. I'm going to have now 4 times 60, since it takes 4 minutes for this process to happen, or at least lose half its value. I have 0 0.6 times k, and when I solve for this, my k is equal to 0 0.0069. And so in this case now, because these two numbers are the same, then that means then that this reaction operates as if it was a second order reaction. So we would say that this, this process that we just looked at where a goes to b, we would say that it's second order or at least A is at least operates in a second order where K is equal to 0 0.0069. Here is a summary of what was covered in this lecture. Rate laws are empirical expressions used to describe how components in a reaction change with time. When they are integrated, these integrated rate law expressions can be used to predict the concentration of each component at a given time. These expressions can also be used to determine the order of a reagent, which quantifies how influential a given component is to the overall reaction. The order also determines the component's half-life, the time it takes for half of the original amount of the component to be left.